Hey guys, Rocky here. Figured I'd touch base. I'm in the garage and I'm working on the uh, the 4x4 project, the Toyota V6 4x4 uh, 4Runner. Uh, I've done some work on it already and I didn't record it because I was in a bit of a hurry. I wasn't sure if I had time to record or not. There were other things going on, but I can show you what I've done uh, so far. Uh, so far, uh, you can probably see that, I think. I don't need too much light. I put on new shocks on the front. There's a new shock there and there's a new shock there and uh, this guy up here is a new shock as well a stabilizer steering stabilizer strut or something I don't know what they call it exactly but it goes into the steering kind of damp and steering dampener I guess they call it uh, put that in checked all the fluids the fluids are all good drove it some to see how the clutch is going to pan out the clutch seems to be okay so far I'm not having much trouble there we got some good tires on it so I'm not going to worry about that too much we did have a did have a leak in a radiator. Uh, it turned out to be a very minor leak. First, I thought it was a cap, so I put a new cap on it. And then, as I uh, drove it, filled it up, and drove it, and warmed it up to temperature, I could see that it wasn't just the cap. The cap probably was okay, but uh, we had a leak here and here, very, very tiny uh, hairline cracks on both sides. And as you can see, I soldered that up. I think we're good to go there. Just got to test drive a little more, drive her some, see how that works out. Uh, tightened up all the belts on it. I did have a little belt squeal. Uh, put the exhaust system on it. Once I did that, then I noticed the belts were squealing. It was too noisy to notice that before, but as soon as we got the, the exhaust on it, I could hear other issues, right, that you normally wouldn't hear if you can't, if you got too much exhaust noise. So we've got uh, a new muffler. I had to put a couple of pieces of pipe in to replace the converter. The converter's long gone. And of course, the original tailpipe is still on it back there. But uh, that's the new muffler, aftermarket, just a cheap muffler. Uh, with that aftermarket muffler and those uh, pipes in the uh, converter gone, or, uh, yeah, the converter, I think it would be. Converter, resonator converter, I guess. <clears throat> Once the converter is gone and aftermarket parts are put on it, it still sounds like a truck. It's not, I mean, it's, it's relatively quiet, it, but it does sound like a truck. It's not, uh, uh, it's not super, super quiet, which is okay. I don't mind that too much. Once uh, all the body work's done and the holes and the bodies anywhere that's getting, you know, exhaust could get into the cabin. Once that's all sealed up, then the uh, from inside you barely notice the noise, but the outside you do hear the, the kind of a truck sound. It sounds like a four-cylinder to me, but it's not. It's a V6, but it has a four-cylinder sound. I don't know why. And that's running on all, all six cylinders. I know that for sure. It's running smooth. It runs good. It's great. If I uh, hadn't been looking for a vehicle for my daughter and come across this, and could have got it for the same price. I would have bought it for myself. In fact, I told her that uh, when she decides to get a good job and move on to a better vehicle, that I want this one. If there's anything left to it, I'll take it and I'll uh, see if I can uh, make something out of it because it's uh, it's got uh, four wheel low, it's got four wheel high. You can shift them inside. You don't have to lock the hubs. The hubs are automatically locking hubs. You can actually shift on the fly, um, except you can't shift from uh, uh, two wheel low or four four wheel or sorry two wheel high, four wheel high into four wheel low. You can shift from two wheel high into four four wheel high, and then from four wheel high back up to two wheel high. And you don't need to use the clutch; you can just shift it on the fly. Uh, they say that if you're going to shift into four wheel low, it's better to get down to uh, five miles an hour, or pull over and stop, and engage the clutch, and then put it into four by four. But uh, you know, just to, for the sake of uh, being safe, not making a mistake and forgetting, I'm going to suggest that they always use the clutch when, no matter where they're shifting to. Always use the clutch and always slow down, you know, really slow, or uh, pull over and shift. Put it in whatever they want it in uh, before they get driving. Don't shift on the fly. Uh, although it, it should be okay, but uh, you know, better safe than sorry. It's an old vehicle. Don't want to make a mistake, blow something up. You know, it's already had a lot of miles on it. Might as well, might as well make it last as long as possible. So let's be safe and just shift it using the clutch and, and you know, putting in whatever you want before you start it out. So like I said, there's a lot of body work to be done on it. There's a lot of spots. You know, this side's not too bad. That's the front. You won't get any exhaust in the cabin for the front side. This is the back side. There are holes that are going, you know, in areas where it will probably get up into the cabin. I wasn't sure if those areas would be a problem. Uh, I decided that I'd better pull some of the panels off on the inside, which I've done. And uh, I'll show you here in a second. I get the key. I don't know how much light we got here, but the interior is pretty decent. It's got a few little spots where it's worn, but it's clean. I mean, in terms of seats and stuff, door panels, I mean, a lot of dust on it. 
the old uh, cover-up mats have to go. I mean, they're pretty rough. That one over there is not as bad, but that one's worth through. But underneath the carpet's in pretty good shape. Door panels are all in pretty good shape. Got a little crack in the dash, nothing too serious. You know, nothing to worry about. The back, you can't tell because I have the seats all folded down in there right now so I can work on it. But uh, if you lift the uh, light carpet up, you can see it's just a little dirt and dust in there. It needs to be cleaned up, but there's no holes in it underneath. It's good. And uh, like I said, you can't really see much in here. I got the seats folded down so I can do some work. But the, the panels are dirty and dusty, but once they're cleaned up, they won't be too bad. Uh, and like I said, the body work on this side is the worst. And uh, I needed to know whether or not any of this is actually going up into the cabin, and I wasn't sure. So I decided to uh, have a look on the inside here. So I started to uh, put the key in here and turn it, and that window rolls down. And then if you want, you can, uh, if you want to open up, you got a little tab here, you pull. That swings the this out. And then from there, you, you unlock it. Right there, just tab to unlock it. And then you got a lever here, you pull in here that opens her up. If you want to open up, I don't got no room to open up right now because I, I have myself pinned in here close to the door. But anyway, I thought I would, uh, you know, this panel, I pulled this panel off to have a look, and then when I started looking down in there, I could see light through there. So that uh, that does come into the uh, passenger compartment, or not passenger compartment, I guess the, the cabin, if you want to call it, in, into the interior of the vehicle. So in order to make it safe, I've got to patch all those holes and make sure no exhaust can come through. So that's what I'm working on right now. I've got everything else done on it. I've taken it for a drive. The 4x4 four four high, 4x4 four four low, that all works. Uh, it seems like a really good solid vehicle at this point. Uh, I mean, you know, it's got high mileage. The motor transmission could quit any time, but the motor is super quiet. Uh, I looked at the oil, checked the oil, and it's uh, it looks brand new. They weren't driving it, so they didn't recently change it. Uh, that's from whenever the last time they drove it and had the oil change, and he said it had been sitting there for quite a long time. He said nobody's been driving it. So uh, he's had it for over 14 years, apparently. Passed it back and forth between himself and his daughter and his son back to him again or back to his son I guess who had, who had it last his son-in-law and uh, I mean I, I really think it's a good vehicle I think it's well worth uh, doing the work on it so that's what I'm doing right now like I said I've got everything pretty much done um, well there's still lots of things that could be done that don't necessarily have to be done but I'll probably do them like I explained to them that uh, I explained to my daughter that she's never going to be able to probably change the tire she could if I showed her but chances are something happens on the road she's not gonna she's not gonna change the tire so I told her I said you know you got four really good tires on there right now those tires are all really good so for a while she's not gonna have to worry about it but if she gets a nail or something like that uh, runs over something punctures a hole in it I told her I said what you want to do is get a can of uh, the uh, tire repair the sealant stuff that you put in and pumps up your tire and put some kind of compound inside so it seals the hole temporarily so you can get someplace and get a, a good tire put on it or get a fix proper fix so I told her that's her best route and uh, what I would do, if I were her, she, she's giving me the okay, is to, is to take this tire off and this whole uh, assembly here that the tire's on and remove that because it's heavy as hell. It's a lot of extra weight there that she doesn't really need, uh, you know. And like I said, she's never going to change the tire herself, I don't think. So that's going to be a, something that would probably benefit gas in terms of uh, gas mileage and, uh, you know, just overall performance of the vehicle to reduce some of the heat. The same goes for the uh, trailer hitch here. She's never going to tow anything. She's got nothing to tow. Uh, she probably won't have anything to tow for quite some time, some time to come. So, you know, I told her to take all that stuff off and store it someplace. And if we take all that stuff off, we're probably going to drop about 120 to 160 pounds. I mean, I'm guessing, but I'm, you know, that's probably uh, equivalent to having a, a passenger, an average size passenger. So that's, uh, that's a quite a drop in weight. So I think I'm going to take those things off for her and uh, try to find a place to put them. I don't know if I'll put them here in the basement or I don't think she's got any place to store them. So, But I'll take it off and that'll be, uh, that'll be a big help. Uh, so right now what I'm working on is the body work, like I said. Well, let's roll this window back up first. Roll this window back up, put the key in. You can do this from inside. There's a button for it inside as well. So it's not like uh, it has to be done with the key, but turn the key. She comes back up. There was a time when a lot of the vehicles were like this, but I uh, don't see that quite so often anymore. So what I've started to work on is the body work, and I decided to do the uh, driver's side first. It is the worst, although it doesn't matter if one's worse than the other or not. If it's a hole, it's a hole. It's got to be fixed. So I uh, 
So what I'm doing here is I, uh, the first thing I, I looked at was this rocker panel here is a little bit bad. So, and everything seems to tie into the rocker panel here, or at least that would be, uh, the rocker panel seems to be the underlying structure. So I'll put the, uh, I'll fix this section here, the rocker panel first. So I'm going to have to put a, put a piece of metal, uh, you know, all wet, wrap it around here and replace this, this uh, rocker panel section. And uh, once I've got the rocker panel section replaced, uh, I'll just weld another piece right over top of that. It's not going to hurt anything because this, this is the way this was put together. There was a seam right here. It was just welded over top. This is the rear quarter coming down. It was welded right over the top. That's going to be fixed too. But anyway, I'm going to I'm going to put a piece in here, shape it. I'm going to weld it right on over top of that. Uh, I'm going to cut out as much of this bad metal as I possibly can. I'm not going to weld it over top of the bad metal. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to use this shape first to get my, my metal that I have here, this piece, to the right shape. I'm going to put that on there and try to hammer that in, in as close to the shape as I can possibly get. And once I think I've got it fairly close, then I'm going to cut this section out where you see the black marker. Uh, I didn't mark it much down here, but it does go up to here. I'll cut it out. I'll probably cut that right out all the way up against tight there. And uh, this piece of metal is wide enough that I can go from here probably all the way back to the section that's already right there. I can go all the way back to here where the original rocker ended. So it'll, it'll come all the way back. And once that's done and in place, and I'll focus on putting a piece of metal down here to reshape this and it give me something to uh, tie into uh, between the rocker panel and, and, and the rear quarter. And then I'll start rebuilding the rear quarter and the inner door uh, jam and stuff in here. It's quite a bit of work here. It's actually pretty rough, but we have something solid to hook onto. That's that's really solid. It's surface rust on it and it's going to rust too at some point, but it'll be a while. I have to tie to something solid and that's uh, that's good all the way down. So that gives me something to work on there. Or something to work with, I should say. I'm going to have to sand this down, grind it down or something. And see how far up here I can go until I get to reasonably good metal. Probably chances are it's going to be here somewhere because the paint's still relatively good there, although we do have a few flecks here that I'll probably just sand out, prime over, put something on it, seal it so it doesn't rust out again right away. And I'll go through all the spots I can find on the vehicle if I have time and just kind of try to fix them up a little. Because once it starts to go, that stuff goes pretty quick, and once it's through, then it means, you know, we're cutting it out and replacing it with another piece of metal. Ideally, it'd be nice to have four quarters to put on here, but I, I don't have those. I thought I did. I don't. Turn out to be uh, jungle flares, but they'll help to dress up the bodywork a little bit when I'm done, too, if it's not... Uh, you know, 100% perfect, which is not going to be, obviously, I'm not a body person. I do a lot of body work. I've done my own body work in some cases, but not a lot of it. I've used Bondo. I've, you know, riveted metal in. I haven't actually had the opportunity to weld any metal in with the equipment that I have now. I never had this equipment before when I did the body work, but I can actually, uh, I've actually got a, a MIG welder, so I'll try, I'll try to make the pieces as best as I can in there, and then uh, I'll shape it with some Bondo. I'll try to get as close as it was before. Hit it with some primer that's fairly close to the, the red here. Some of the primers, that sandy reddish color, will kind of come close to that. It won't have a shine or anything, but then I'll try to find some, some paint that'll be relatively close to a match, so that semi-gloss red or something that'll come relatively close to what we have on there and, and spray that on, or maybe even just put, you know, what a lot of people would do when they do this kind of thing sometimes is, uh, you know, if you have a, a four inch or six inch section along the bottom of the vehicle, just kind of put a stripe over that whole section with black, you know, rock guard or black paint to make it look like a, a body stripe package or something that came with the vehicle. But I'll find a way to dress it up a little bit. Not going to be perfect, but it is a, a fantastic little vehicle, I think. Well worth, uh, well worth the work. Problem is, I've gotten a couple of calls on possible couple of jobs, and uh, I'm going to be looking to do, be doing some interviews here uh, next week for sure. I've got one, and there may be another one coming right along behind it, and uh, I'm going to have to take something somewhere. Within the next two to three weeks, I could be, you know, in Edmonton or BC or who knows where. So I'm trying to focus and get this done as quick as possible because this is really the only thing left that I need to do in order to feel comfortable and, and know that she'll be safe to drive this with the kids in the vehicle, not having any exhaust coming into the cabin. So, so that's the goal right now. Uh, so I'm going to stop recording now and leave you guys with that and uh, get to work and uh, show you guys what I've done. I might even maybe uh, set the camera up so it can you guys can watch me as I beat on a piece of metal here and try to shape it. Uh, probably won't do a lot of commentary, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll definitely set you up and see what I can get recorded. So until then, peace out.